Okay, good morning. Welcome to the uh, new Danbury Ridgefield CARA CAP uh, communications container. Uh, we're over here at the Danbury Airport uh, waiting for the Air National Guard to show up for the uh, airlift of this container up onto the top of Spruce Mountain. And uh, I'll give everybody a brief walkthrough of uh, the equipment in the container and uh, some of the features we have. Uh, starting here by the doors, we have a 100 amp uh, power distribution panel, uh, which will be fed by the commercial power uh, up on top of the tower. And uh, we have a whole series of uh, uh, receptacles, each on its own separate circuit for uh, each of the repeaters, uh, commercial and uh, government and uh, amateur that would be able to go in here. And we have uh, capacity in here now, for right now, for 16. And uh, the way it's built, it's easily expanded to more. Uh, we have uh, a ventilation fan up here in the back corner of the uh, container to uh, uh, you know, pull the heat out with the, when the temperature gets too warm in here. And uh, along the bottom we have a, a small piece of electric baseboard heat for uh, the winter time to just uh, break the chill in here a little bit. In the far back corner here, we have uh, a, uh, a bulkhead assembly for uh, all the access for all the uh, cables for the repeaters, and uh, that was uh, built by Hal, KB1US, and uh, he's the one that masterminded most of the construction here, uh, and uh, he was uh, he coordinated most of the job. And uh, let's see, uh, we'll go, we'll step outside the container here, <laughs> and. Uh, why don't you come around this side then? Okay, uh, we're outside the container now. Uh, there will be an air intake fitting here, uh, which we haven't received yet, but as soon as we get it, that will go right in there. And uh, the electrical power will feed in through this fitting here, which is, uh, has to be piped up yet. That's, that's part of the job where we're going to need some more help. Um, when a helicopter comes, they're going to attach a rather large, I think it's a 150 foot long cable sling to these fittings in the top corners of the box. They're called twist lock fittings and uh, they'll pick, up, pick, it, pick the container up from the four top fittings. There's one, there's one on each corner and uh, there's also four on the bottom and to which we've attached uh, what they call a tag line so that uh, the ground crew has something to grab a hold of when the container is still approximately 20 feet off the ground and they can uh, guide it down. And uh, it's just a matter now of waiting for the crew to come and then we're ready to go. Three fellows are mechanics with us, one of them is an instructor. So that's who the crew is. And the reason I want you to know that is because that, there's, there's real people that are doing this stuff. I mean, just like you. I know what we're going to get into here. What we're going to do is we got to hook this box onto this helicopter, take it to that hill, and set it down on some pilots up here, which you all have seen. The box is 8 feet wide, 20 feet long. The last ten we got the pylons uh, 10 feet wide, 22 feet long, so it's kind of close. Actually, you got, you got a foot on each side. I think the pylons are. Well, that's what I said. It's kind of close. <laughs> because we don't know what this box is going to do. We don't know if it's going to just come out and sit there like it is. We don't know if it's going to turn into a spinner, turn crazy. Uh, we don't know what it's going to do. So we got to consider all the all the different options. What I want to know is, first off, who's going to be on this end hooking to the helicopter? Huh? Somebody got to hook me together to the helicopter. 
Whatever you yeah. I'm gonna need two people to do that. Whatever you need, we, we, we get back. I'm gonna need two people, I wanna know who they are. You doing the same thing? I'll do this. Huh? I'll do this and take a break for one. Yeah. Here we are. Okay. Right over here. I'm going to need six or eight people, I'm, you know, the more merrier, but not too many, that are going to work the load up on the hill. Who are them? Right here. Right, see? And then who's in charge of that group? One. Can't be both. <laughs> not to be insulted, but I need... I just want to come in. Just, well, come in not to be too insulting, I need eight strong guys and one smart one. <laughs> You'll get the other way around. <laughs> Right, guys, he's going to be in charge. He's got, I'm looking at him. We're all looking at him. And what he says goes up there. Because that's the hard part of this job. Okay? And I got to talk quite a bit with you guys because you got two jobs. The first is to help guide this thing in so that we get it onto the pilings. And the second is later, you're going to have to unhook the slings after it's in. And we're going to come back and you're going to have to hook it on. That's why you got to hear both parts of this because you're going to do a hookup too. Okay. Right now my men are rigging this thing. They're putting uh, some straps up there. You can see that there's about 20 feet of webbing and then about 6, 7 feet of chain. They're going to be looping the chain through the top of the conex back on itself. It'll be hooked there, probably be taped. Tape will be masking tape. You can break it off real easy. That sort of a thing. It's all going to come together to an apex, and there will ultimately be a metal clevis there. A metal clevis that's going to go in this hook. Okay? Now the hook is on a hoist. When you look underneath it, you can see this cable. In this particular machine, I got about 86 feet of cable on it. Now, I suppose I have 100 feet of cable, but the folks that owned this machine before we got it down to Fort Eustis, they occasionally sheared hooks and things like that. Um, Connecticut Guards had these machines since 79. We haven't dropped the customer load yet, and we're not intending to today because we know this is important. To I've been under this machine when it's flying, and you've got to understand what this machine is doing. First off, this flying rotor system, all together, is 78 feet long. Right? That end to that end, plus a few inches. And it's turning pretty good. Hurricane force winds. Serious, 100 mile plus, okay? 100 mile winds blow a lot of things around. You might have noticed these little yellow things on here, every one of them is standing out straight on the landing and I haven't got anything on the hook, okay? Now just think, you're up on the hill, if you guys, I understand you went up and had a clean up party up there, <laughs> but everything you, everything you left, I'm gonna get to blow, <laughs> all right? If there's branches up in the trees, they're going to be falling down. If there's paper, small rocks, anything, it's going to be blowing. That's why everybody goes up on the hill. Got to have some kind of eye protection. I hope you got it. Okay. You got to have heavy gloves. You got to have some kind of helmet or something to protect your head. The idea is to put the box on the pile and not to hurt anybody. Okay? But it will be blowy. Now I'm going to tell you, you stand out there, it's a nice warm day, hot, you see the helicopter, looks like a big praying mantis with that orange, that gray thing hanging underneath, it's in that pretty, click, 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 and it gets a little closer. Now you start hearing my engine screaming and howling, right, and now the thing starts getting closer and then the wind starts coming up, you'll see over there, the stuff, leaves as things are blowing and all that sort of thing, and then all of a sudden you are in it, and it's blowing like holy dickens, okay? Now I'm going to fly over you. All right? That is blowing like holy hell. If that's not enough, you got this box swinging back and forth at 7,000 pounds. These two big black things are waving back and forth. Right? You're sure I'm trying to kill you.
about 3484 Tango, uh, Denver and Ground. Uh, just hold your position momentarily. 84 Tango. 39 are uniform going around. 2084 Charlie 5 West with India. Travel Air 2084 Charlie Denver and Tower make correction runway once. Correction. Runway 26 report left downwind. Call you left downwind 2684 Charlie. Denver Tower, Cherokee 5363 Sierra. Four six seven is ready for departure. Eight four tango. Seven standby. Cessna three ninety from amendment last instructions. Make that right traffic to runway two six. Uh, negative. Uh, we can go back on the taxiway if uh, the BAC from here. Roger. We, you need to hold your position though for that reference to that helicopter. It generates too much. Uh, Crop wash and may flip you over. We have to get him out of here first. Roger, uh, can we go down the runway then and uh, turn off? Just 7 Alpha Victor, taxi without the lane now to Bluebird. Make the right turn and taxi to Bluebird. Sir. Negative. Uh, just hold your position right there momentarily. He's carrying that box right now. 363 Sierra Danbury Tower. Make right traffic to runway 26. Report to midfield right down one. Park up to 2 2 Mike, standby. Crane 467, proceed as report. Danbury Tower. Stand by, there'll be a three minute delay for weight turbulence from the crane. Okay, and that's Aerostar 117 Fox Zero Star 117 Fox Star, right. At Denver Tower 93 November, coming up on the prison within the area bound for dog training area. Hug 529, caution for weight turbulence, taxi to runway 26. 529. Aerostar Star uh, 117 Fox Star, taxi into position and hold. 390 uniform, I'm following a high wing on the right downwind. All right. The 390 uniform, rock your wings. Golden Eagle, 421 Alpha Danbury Tower, make right traffic to runway 26, report the right downwind. Three degrees in Danbury. I'm Dennis Lamar with the two o'clock WLAD news. It's rotor churning out hurricane force winds. A huge Sikorsky Sky Crane helicopter came to Danbury today on a mission. What we're going to do is we've got to hook this box onto this helicopter, take it to that hill, and set it down on some pylons up there, which you all have seen. The box is eight feet wide and 20 feet long, and last measure you got the pylons uh, 10 feet wide and 22 feet long, so it's kind of close. Connecticut Army National Guard pilot David Reed says he did not have any trouble moving the locked 5,000 pound communications container to the top of Spruce Mountain. Oh, we're going good, didn't we? We could see that. We just sat nice sideways. And then when I got down, the guys, uh, the guys did their thing properly, you know. 
They're, they were adequately selected. And how did Reed select his crew? Not to be too insulting. I need eight strong guys and one smart one. The prep work was done by volunteers from the Candlewood Amateur Radio Association and the Civil Air Patrol. The shed will serve a variety of local emergency commercial and non-commercial radio users.